Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us D. Raghunandan, who has discussed earlier with us on various issues of aeronautics, aircraft, rockets, and so on. Today we are going to discuss the latest launch, which is being called a space launch, but is also being called a suborbital launch of Richard Branson's new toy, the Virgin Galactica uh, spacecraft. Raghu, this has become a sort of competition between three billionaires, Jeff Bezos, who also has a rocket uh, and spacecraft under development. Of course, Elon Musk, who started it earlier, at least the publicity about it. And now Richard Branson, who's taken over another program than which he has crafted it for this specific purpose. So what does it indicate that is it for really exploring space or is this particular launch, particularly what Richard Branson and Virgin Galactica has done, is it really for space joy rides? So the, uh, the joy rides are certainly important to Branson uh, because that's what he wants to sell uh, to the public, not to the public, but to the well-heeled public uh, because only they can afford to take a ride uh, on this. But that's the idea he's trying to sell is that this is a joy ride, once in a lifetime opportunity to go to space, experience weightlessness, uh, etc. Uh, but there is a longer term uh, vision involved also. Given Branson's own background with Virgin uh, Atlantic and the Virgin Airlines that he runs, uh, this uh, is also being used as a lead up to a possible um, passenger aircraft uh, model, uh, which would uh, which replicates the uh, hypersonic uh, missiles and aircraft that we hear about uh, so much. The idea being, you take it up to altitude sufficiently enough to allow the aircraft to glide back to Earth from a sufficient height to give it uh, Mach 4, Mach 6 uh, speeds and glide back to its position. So this is a way of uh, cheating the old Concorde problem of supersonic uh, air travel. So this can later morph into a hypersonic aircraft, which can then be used for polar launches, uh, San Francisco to Tokyo, New York to wherever uh, kind of things to cut down uh, travel. So that's always been a long-term civilian ambition of some people and Branson is trying to kill two birds with one stone uh, with this. Well, of course, lots of issues about using hypersonic aircraft Absolutely. for civilian Absolutely. purposes. Absolutely. Subject Absolutely. people to Mac 5, Mac 6 kind of That's thing. right. That's right. And using it for missiles, which is yep. one of the other application we have discussed. Yep. Yeah. Well, but hypersonic passenger aircraft. Is that's right. That's right. Have so, to think about. so that's the longer term thing, because after all, uh, as we've been saying, the um, number of people who are likely to spend two hundred thousand dollars for a seat. I thought this is a million dollars. So no, this is right now. He's offering it for two hundred thousand dollars. But now that the first uh, flight has gone off as well as it has. Uh, observers are expecting this price tag to go up before it starts coming down. So the initial lot will go much higher than $200,000. Uh, and then maybe it will start uh, coming down. Uh, this is a modern day version of the Hindenburg uh, uh, balloon, which was seen as the uh, luxury travel for the super rich uh, till it blew up of course, because of a hydrogen uh, explosion. But uh, these kinds of pioneering ventures will always aim for the super rich first and then wait to see whether it catches on to a broader uh, public or not, which seems to be doubtful at this stage, unless the hypersonic plane turns out to be a reality with more, many more passengers than it is carrying at the moment. Well, let's hope that it doesn't go the hidden <laughs> yeah. route. Well, that's not a very happy memory. Uh, but at the moment, it does seem to be a 15-minute 
joyride, yeah. uh, which is what it really was. Coming back to the second issue, of course, uh, this is uh, something who is the first is not very important. Uh, the Virgin has pipped the other two billionaires to the post, being the first one to send a man ret returned uh, general civilian population vehicle, so to say. But the other issue that has come up is calling it space. Now, you know, when we were in school, we understood a space mission should be something which takes people beyond Earth's gravitational uh, pull and therefore put it in an orbit. That, that was the understanding which we had and which is what Gagarin, for instance, Yuri Gagarin did. Now, suborbital is what Alan Shepard did when his spacecraft went up. And there it did not exceed escape velocity, which is again, what we learned in school, is what you need to take beyond Earth's gravitational field. So what is this suborbital and space when you don't really exceed the orbital velocity or the, the acceleration required to counterbalance Earth's gravity? and put yourself in a gravitational, an orbit which is at least stable. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, of course, these uh, uh, spacecraft which Bradson uh, has made, uh, he's been upfront about it, uh, that it is essentially suborbital, although he does not want to keep talking about it. Because, as I said, his selling point is, I'm taking you to space, uh, which, uh, as you just said, is not really true. Uh, where does uh, airspace end and where does space begin uh, has long been a question. And as you said, it is where uh, the Earth's gravitation ends in that sense and where you escape beyond gravitation. The other way of looking at it is it is where orbital mechanics come into uh, the picture rather than aerodynamics. Uh, yeah, exactly. That means centrifugal force balances the gravity. Exactly. Pull, so not when, when your whole lift and drag business stops uh, and where you go beyond that is where space uh, begins. Now, technically speaking, this is called the von Karman line after the Hungarian scientist who uh, discovered uh, this line. And it's normally put at about... Uh, 80 miles uh, above the earth. Uh, I'm okay. saying miles yeah, because, because we've yeah. been hearing all this NASA stuff and it's all in miles uh, uh, for this. Also but, 100 kilometers is also the right. Average. Whereas with the, uh, with the Americans, because as you said, Alan Shepard did not make it to orbit, uh, but was really a suborbital launch. The American and NASA practice is to declare anyone who has crossed 50 miles an astronaut. And they give you astronaut wings. So yesterday after Richard Branson landed, somebody went across and pinned astronaut uh, uh, wings on him to signify that he's crossed 50 miles, uh, which as we know is not uh, really uh, space. Uh, but that's the altitude <coughs> that Branson was aiming at. Because what he wants to give is that thrill of at an altitude of 50 miles plus, uh, <coughs> the sky around you darkens. Uh, it becomes black. So it gives you that sense of being in space. So that's one. And secondly, when the um, rocket which has taken uh, Virgin Galactica up uh, reaches its uh, apogee and starts to dip. Actually, it starts falling because of gravity and it's that fall and the velocity at which it starts falling which gives you momentarily that feeling of weightlessness. Actually, they have not escaped gravity. There is no weightlessness, but a impression of weightlessness is generated because you've reached a height and started going back and that um, shift of momentum gives you that feeling of weightlessness and you start because the velocity of your drop is so uh, fast. So you experience the dark sky. You can look at the earth below you and you'll see this blue sphere and the curvature of the earth. 
and you will experience two to three minutes of quote unquote apparent weightlessness. So that's the selling point of Branson's uh, trip and what he is uh, selling uh, in this. Uh, and that's his uh, goal. He's not trying anything more than that for now. Maybe he will later because one problem he's going to run up against is Jeff Bezos, who's going to follow him on the 20th of this month, is actually going beyond the Ford Carman point. Uh, and in this space race of the billionaires, uh, I think having been the first up in space is so-called in space is one thing, but I think he will find it very difficult to keep competing with Bezos unless he is also able to re-engineer Virgin Galactica to reach the von Karman point. Just for our viewers, Alan Shepard's the astronaut uh, title that he was given was because Yuri Gagarin had gone up, actually gone into space by Raghu's, what he said was the definition. And therefore, the US needed to do something very quickly. They sent him on a suborbital mission, knowing full well that it wasn't a space flight as Gagarin had done. In fact, the amount of time he spent was also much less. The distance travel was much less. It was within the United States virtually. That was the distance that he traveled. Uh, something like 350 kilometers or something yeah. against Gagarin. A huge number of uh, uh, kilometers that he had traveled. And if we look at what Raghu was talking about in this suborbital flight, there's the other issue that weightlessness you can actually get without doing such a long uh, flight. In fact, that's what the astronauts practice by getting on a, a kind of ballistic target, they practice the same thing or one to two minutes of weightlessness. So getting weightlessness is not the issue, but packaging the whole thing that you've gone up such a height, this is something others have not achieved, therefore give us half a million dollars, $200,000, to get you through the same sense is I think the USP of this. So this is at the moment very much a billionaire's club competition for offering a privilege which the millionaires can access, but for not for other people. So in a long-term sense, does it have an implication? It only matters if it also extends to the space launches. And this is what the next issue really I wanted to ask you, as you know, the RD-180 has been the workhorse of even the U.S. launches. Atlas. Atlas rockets uses the RD-180 uh, engine, which is Russian engine, which after the fall of Soviet Union, Americans started using because they were able to get it relatively cheaply. With the geostrategic tensions now building up between the United States and Russia again, do you see, for instance, a SpaceX kind of venture and maybe Branson as well as Bezos kind of venture also competing for the rocket engines replacing RD-180 in the US uh, future space programs? See, as far as uh, heavy launch vehicles are concerned, that is a game which Elon Musk is playing. And frankly, neither Jeff Bezos nor uh, Branson are really into that uh, work. Their work has been more designed to the aircraft and to an engine which can carry their aircraft slash spacecraft, in Branson's case, to suborbital uh, heights and to Jeff Bezos a little beyond that to get into uh, uh, past the von Karman uh, point. Uh, Elon Musk's uh, rocketry is more his focus than in the spacecraft uh, at the moment. So he is more into the booster rockets, his current Atlas Heavy, uh, uh, not Atlas Heavy, his, uh, uh, what's it called, his, uh, his big rocket which takes his uh, uh, booster up, reusable, and then comes landing back. Uh, that is now actually more powerful than the Atlas uh, series of uh, rockets. So he is aiming at a slightly different market. He's aiming at the launch market. Uh, he's aiming finally at uh, a rocket system which would take a rocket to the moon 
and use the moon as a base to then launch rockets from moon to mars or uh, wherever so i would actually differentiate uh, the elon musk game plan from the jeff bezos richard branson uh, game plans i think the focus of elon musk is more in the uh, rockets and the rocketry and the launch vehicle market whereas these two are aiming at the uh, billionaires uh, tourism space tourism market although elon musk is also playing at that and is likely to come out with his version also uh, fairly soon he was himself present by the way yesterday at branson's uh, launch uh, and wished richard branson god speed uh, in his venture so we'll see how that turns out but in terms of launch vehicles i think he's way ahead of the other two of course we'll discuss another day <coughs> the respective engine issues and yeah. the fact that we discovered the russian yeah. advances in engine which had outstripped the americans considerably and that's why the americans switched to the rd180 for their atlas rockets that is for another day and how that shapes up for the future but nevertheless it's interesting that the three billionaires <coughs> are now jostling each other for a space tourism market but also hope maybe for the space larger space market whether uh, the three billionaires will have at least imagine themselves to migrate out of this troubled earth and set up something elsewhere is something we have to see because i think they seem to envisage a time when the billionaire should leave the earth the way they are going coming back to elon musk wishing uh, branson god speed as you know the three billionaires have been snapping at each other about their programs quite sure. quite a bit and maybe elon musk when he wish Uh, wished him god speed had some other meaning to it yeah so uh, i agree with you uh, let's not forget also that uh, the other ambition here is to look at the hypersonic uh, air travel market uh, which is the subtext uh, in all this which uh, richard branson hides under his general boyish enthusiasm Uh, there is a hard commercial angle to this as well and he's looking at the hyper uh, sonic vehicle as a uh, viable uh, passenger uh, uh, aircraft uh, in the future so that's another uh, aspect which we should keep an eye on uh, down the road and i think that would be true of uh, jeff bezos's uh, uh, venture uh, as well as far as the space launch vehicle uh, market is concerned there's no doubt that elon musk has the edge there partly because the other two are not really competing uh, for that at the moment elon musk is quite far ahead and because nasa has decided not to get into it which by the way may not last for very long there are already signs uh, nasa is beginning to snipe and make sarcastic remarks about elon musk's uh rockets nasa is beginning to conduct tests of its own on rocketry we may see the return of nasa to this uh, space and that's another angle which i would like to await uh, the future to tell us what that's going to be yeah and of course as we know that uh, when you talk about rocketry it has military implications so therefore how to compete with the russians in the future both for the hypersonic design market for future launches and with china also in exactly i was just going to add yeah. there's a third horse in the race now which is likely to pull ahead uh, certainly of russia in the uh, short to medium term and actually, god knows what's going to happen in the longer run with the americans actually china has also used the russian technology extensively for their program though they have also uh, and advanced it in certain ways but as for the rocketry is concerned they still seem to be using a lot of the russian technology so we'll, we'll have to see how uh, they do and they also work it, together yeah because china has done very well with its uh, uh, rocket uh, launch and its uh, mars mission uh, has gone far better than people had uh, earlier thought uh, that they would be able to do okay. and that's largely because of the launch vehicle that they were 
Yeah, but the launch phase, to... again, we can discuss yeah. it another day. They seem to have borrowed quite significantly from the Russian. Yeah, yeah, of course, of so course. That, that will of course. Be, we can of course. cover the day. But yeah. the point is that we are going to see a competition, it seems, now again, in yes. rocketry, in space, and hopefully it will be not just for missiles and not just for war, but for purposes which have at least in meaning for all of us here. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us. Thank you. Discussing relatively complex issues which we are now forced to deal with as a part of our everyday life, from COVID-19 to hypersonic vehicles, as well as hypersonic missiles. This is all Thank the time you. we have for NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick and do visit our website. Thank <laughs> you.